Yeah. Anytime I get to do commentary with a new person, it's a special occasion. It is, man. I'm, I feel like we need to. Oh, they're just starting right off into the Going aggressive. Going play. right in the offense. Interesting. It's just like no. I, I'm gonna just just strangle Joel to death right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's thinking. Slowly. If he dies, he dies. Swing, good swing. Good just, swing. Just make it weird. Is that the game plan? Like, just make it But weird. with a specific, uh, yeah, a very specific shot. It's not so much like random weird, but yeah. like, um, let's get it up higher. Let, let's buy him some more time. Because yeah. the more he goes flat, it's like the worse it is for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. The, the exchange becomes at a rhythm that's not, he's not comfortable. It's not beneficial. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually, you know, what Scott and I were just talking about with like, the best thing that could happen here is that Scott doesn't change anything and he just starts, Joel just starts going for more and simplifies it and makes this mm -hmm. even nice. faster. One way traffic. Oh, That's a good I like slice. It, I like it, I like it. I mean, great point here. Pass. It's tough. I love to ask him, like, where were you aiming there? On the back end. Because yeah. it wasn't five feet over than that, like what yeah. we talked about. But in the middle of that exchange, it's so hard to just commit to it. It's it's like being in a boxing ring and yeah. caught with a couple jabs, and then For you sure. just go, I'm going to swing as hard as I can. You know? I just want to get out of this. And I mean, honestly, the two slice he hit before that was a nice like little change up. I'm surprised mm -hmm. he tried to come back over the ball. But I mean, Scott's only made one unforced. Oh, <laughs> put it in hey, the <laughs> I'm gonna say that more often. You ask and you shall receive. I just doubled his errors with one comment. I like he hasn't made an error and then it was like an egregious error because <laughs> yeah, we're like, it. <laughs> Scott is so consistent. <laughs> Let's go! Talisman or something in your pocket? Like it's <laughs> a little voodoo doll. Scott never misses. Especially on 3040. <laughs> this is way more fun being on the commentary booth. Whoa. Good swing. Joel's got some wheels though, man. Mm. Yeah, he really covers quick. the court really well. Yeah, real quick. He's very uh, efficient, like myself. <laughs> Is that how you classify yourself? Yeah, so efficient. efficient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're, uh, we're both just a little too tall for our weight. All right, yeah, yeah. That's what, um, no one's ever called me fast, but I am long. There you go. Yep. Long, long arm of the law, as but, you said, in our, uh, double, our doubles match. Yeah, that's right, that's right. The spider. <laughs> Serve. Was that a second? Or was it a, a what? I think it was a left. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna say now Scott's just yeah, being a just, dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or is that four and zero right now? Yeah. Yeah, dude, the commentary is so much fun. Especially when it's like a, a tight match and like you know both the players. Oh that sucks. Oh, that's it. Yeah. It might, it might sound like a uh, like a false uh, like compliment, but just the fact that you've gotten to 30 in a couple games, you know, like you've you've given him enough shots. Uh, he's only you know he's only made three unforced errors in the whole set. Does that mean I'm not doing enough or? No, because the, okay, so here's where the focus is so important. The plan was never to out hit him. It never was 
right? But it was to goad him into making mistakes. And the thing is to be able to do that, I need to have a ball that I can set up for and create a mistake ball for him. And I'm just on, I'm like the cat chasing the little fuzzy catnip around the room. I, I can't set up, I can't. So Scott threw a wrench in the middle of our plans by deciding to go hard offense. Like that, we, I didn't expect that out of the gate from him. And he's not only going hard offense, but he's not making any mistakes. Right. And so it's like, well, what, what the hell do you do, right? Like he, he's pressuring, 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 and making, making, making. And so that forces our hand. To, we have to double down one way or the other. Well, we either have to go mega consistent. That was like the really high, loopy, you know, spinny, which you got a couple in there like yeah, yeah. two games ago. Uh, but or, when the ball is coming as fast as it is, yes. to try to set up and hit yep. one of those mega spinny things, right. I'm just trying to get it back over the net, frankly. Yep. And so that's that's where we're at. And so that's basically our opportunity at this point is we know he's pressing. He's going to continue to do that as long as it's working. And so your opportunity here is to work on your ability to calmly still hit the type of shot you want to hit, even okay. though you're under duress. Okay. And that's, that's just that's the challenge today. Okay. But I don't see like a way out of this where it's like, oh, all you got to do is like hit it short to the backhand and like that unlocks the match. Right, like there, right, there's right. not that kind of like simple answer in this kind of David and Goliath uh, setup. I'm not going to complain. I'm up 5-0. My focus level, I'm not, I'm, I'm not happy with both of those games, 40-love, and then I fall asleep for a point or two. So like. one thing I thought was really interesting, um, and, and you'll see this, we don't play the same way we practice, do we? Because like you watch this guy in warm up, I thought I was going to have 10 ball rallies before I was getting these short balls. Yeah. Um, you can, I can feel him pressing, and I can feel that all I need to do is just let nerves, him keep man. pressing. Yeah. Nerves. Yeah, I mean, it's just probably his first time being filmed. There's a whole new level of nerves that comes with that. So yeah, well, I think he's just very tight because, like, sure. in the warm-up, I was thinking, man, like, I'm going to have some long points. I'm going to be winded. Yeah. He's just giving me a lot, of, a lot of, I think, probably uncharacteristic errors for himself. And then now he's trying to press because I think he's feeling – feeling the heat yeah yeah and i, I know uh, I'm, i would guess that ian is talking to him about not pressing and, yeah just and, extending the point yeah stay in it let you let you press let you try to go for more and get flashy you know maybe slip a game up or whatever else so. right now just bring it home close it up yep stay the course stay, stay the focused up. yep no enforced stairs yep <laughs> it's all right oh has a lead first one of the match Dude, you gotta, first blood you gotta take what you can get Underhand serve, hit the ball. Uh, he's just he's just going for it. I mean, at this point at five love, it may not be a bad strategy. To just connect with a couple. Yeah, I caught it. 24 points in a row starts with one. It's it's happened at some point in history. It's had to, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Ah oh, damn, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's tough. Inside in, small part of the line. <laughs> Just call it out, John. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> call that that's, out. <laughs> that's a solution. It seemed kind of obvious, but yeah. you know. <laughs> nice roll. Rude. Are you smiling? Boo. Boo. Is it weird if I'm, I'm like coaching him and I'm rooting against him? <laughs> <laughs> Not in this instance, though. <laughs> Even Kenny. Kenny's like, I'm not rooting for him either. <laughs> oh, good return, Scott. Oh. Oh, that's oh, tough. That's tough. That is tough. I mean, that's like a little giddy up step there. And Joel had a decent ball there. It's a great point. Yeah. He played yeah. the whole point great. Played the point back behind him. It's got to come up with a tough ball. A little off Generous. Yeah. Generous. Feels like WTF. Ooh. <laughs> Good point, guys. Uh, that is tough. <laughs> All right, good battle, boys. Um, so, Joel, let's start with you. Like, synopsis out of the gates, like, warming up with Scott. Like, what, what was your, what did you think? Like, what were the strengths, weaknesses? 
Did they match up to what you thought? Like, I don't tolerate to sunlight it? well. That's a clear. Uh, and we're playing indoors, so that's <laughs> yeah, that wasn't to your advantage at all. You know, I, Ian and I actually uh, came up with a really, I think, great plan. I wanted to move Scott around. I knew his strokes were great, but I thought maybe I could tire him out, and, and thought maybe he wasn't so eager to run left to right. So that was the plan. Also to hit deep to his backhand, thinking it might come short and I could do something. It's a great plan, but unfortunately, he was, I was overmatched, and he was so good at putting the ball deep on me and hitting it with pace. I was playing catch up. I was the cat chasing the cheese, and I, I could never implement anything I wanted to. Um, and so my, my plan kind of went awry. Yeah, so coach, what do you think, coach? Like, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, he, uh, Scott just put us in a tough spot because we couldn't uh, really, Joel really said it well. Like, uh, it just felt like he was behind the whole time. So you re if Joel hit the ball harder, it almost just kind of played into your game even better because you sent the, the ball back that much easier and Joel felt even more pressured. Right. So like offense on top of offense wasn't the solution. And so we kind of doubled down on trying to hit higher, spinnier, like deeper balls to just to extend the points. Right. But he was having a hard time getting that height and depth and so it was kind of sitting up short. So it was kind of like we were kind of squeezed in both directions. Yeah, I mean, one thing that I thought was interesting, warming up with Joel, I was thinking, Long cross court balls. I'm gonna be moving a lot. I could sense maybe like a little bit of nervousness. This is obvious. is this your first time being filmed uh, second playing a time. match too? Second. So time. that's terrifying. I can tell you when I played Ian on the internet, that's the most nervous I've ever been I'm on a tennis court ever. <laughs> you are. If he had had, if he had the goatee, then <laughs> it would have been six. There's no way I would have pulled that one out. But um, Full bacon. but yeah, I mean, it's funny. It's just a testament to like you see. It's very hard to play like you practice. Like I was expecting a completely different opponent. I even said to Nate in the warm-ups that I was thinking I was going to be having long points, but that I thought ultimately I could win some cross-court rallies. And I was actually surprised to see I was generating short balls easier than I thought I would. So it was just things, things change under pressure for sure. Would you say like the shot tolerance of it, like his ball just felt like you were under pressure even just in, a, in, the, in the rally itself? I, the, yeah, I was under pressure in the rally, but also it's a matter of how many shots can I make in a row. I think I made three backhands yeah. in a row, but then the fourth just wasn't going to fall. And I think he was able just to keep getting, I mean, consistency is a huge weapon that we forget about. And he, he was consistent and I wasn't. And that put pressure on me when you're not consistent. That was actually my, my analysis. Like when I was saying sh sword, shield, Achilles heel, I was like, good forehand. Like you're, you're doing damage to the war in the backhand. You know, it, I wouldn't say it's the Achilles heel. Like you're you're making the backhand, and you can actually put some pop on it. But the shot tolerance. I was like, at the end of the day, like kind of a heavyweight jab and a middleweight jab. It's like, it's a, it always under pressure. I thought it would have been interesting, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong though. But like Scott's a rhythm player, so like anytime we get out and play, like the more the faster I try to play, and, and I said something to Ian about like ping pong when he's like boom 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 like. That's what he wants. I thought it would have been interesting had you gone to like almost entirely slice. Or moon balls. Or, that first, yeah, that first point we, we, we hit that high ball, that's what we were trying I, to say. I consciously that. said to myself, don't go for too much here. But there are definitely days where like a moon ball strategy there would have just all of a sudden created a bunch of errors because I would go for too much. Yeah. So like that strategy was, was a good strategy. I, li I like going, throwing the hack at you every now and then. Yeah. You've checked a few. For sure. <laughs> I don't have good levels of focus. It's well known. All right, so I mean that was fun. I think I think we learned. But so we're going to talk about now about how to to. So if you you can get out there and play with, with your buddies and all like at the levels or differences, but there's ways that you can do it and still make it rewarding for both players. That's yeah, gonna I want to talk about that a little bit in our yeah. next video. We're actually going to talk about even like how to handicap. But just talking about that experience. I mean, going out there, we knew there was a mismatch, right? Like, the, are you a four or five? I mean, uh, hitting a 4-5, but in match play, you know, 4-0. Yeah, so, so let's call it a 4-0, low-level 4-5 against a 5-0. Like, we're expecting that outcome. None of us are right. surprised. I'm not, like, bragging. Like, that was what was supposed to happen. But the key is what each of us are working on while that's happening to make sure we're actually getting something out of it. So for me as a 5-0, I know to play at the level I want to play at, I cannot hit a ball in the middle third of the court against other 5-0s and not be punished for it. So when I play against a 4-0 or 4-5, I actually can improve, but I need to maintain the mindset of playing the outer thirds of the court, holding myself to the same standard that I know I want to play against in competition. So be careful if you're playing against somebody at a lower level than you, make sure you're holding yourself to the same standards. You know, I, maybe I would roll a ball to the middle of the court and Joel wouldn't punish me and I win the point. I'm actually getting worse 
by playing that way. I need to keep focusing on the things that I need to think about playing at the level I want to play at. And then if you're playing against somebody who's better than you are, that's where you try and think about the things that you need to work on in your specific game. And that's when you try them because there's nothing, nothing to lose, right? That's when you try the things that you've been working on in practice and see if you can start putting some of these things together. Well, so I'm glad you said that because Ian and I have some special stipulations oh, planned special. for this next set. Uh -oh. so. All right, you're going to want to see this next video, I think. I'm not, it sounds <laughs> like, but. All right, guys, stay tuned. We will see you in the next video.